and sing together number 724, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, number 724. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We come together this evening on this third Sunday of Ordinary Time to celebrate the newest feast day given to us in the church by our Holy Father, Pope Francis, this Sunday of the Word of God, when in a special way we thank God for giving us his revelation through the written scriptures so that we can come to know and understand him much better. And so at this time, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Our psalm can be found in number 41, number 41 in your gather hymnals. Yeah. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not, might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I once heard it said that God gave us two ears and one mouth because listening was twice as important as speaking. I know that's hardly an anatomy lesson, but it does reveal something when it comes to the practice of spiritual listening. To hear the voice of Jesus speaking to us requires setting aside our preconceived ideas and our own narrow expectations. In our gospel reading, Jesus approaches two brothers, Peter and Andrew, who are routinely doing what they do every day, which is casting their nets. Jesus asks them to come and follow him. And the response is powerful. They left their nets. They left what they were routinely doing. They left what was familiar. A little while later, Jesus approaches two other brothers, 
James and John, who were doing something very routine too. They were mending their nets. What was it that Jesus was calling these fishermen to? We read in the Gospels that over the next three years, they walked with him, they learned from him. They experienced wonders that they never dreamed of in unexpected places and in unexpected people. The call of Jesus changed them and transformed them, even though they sometimes resisted. They gradually grew in understanding and awareness of who he was and who they were called to be. What was the most important thing in their life? What was ultimately real? It's almost like they had to separate from the ties that bound them in order to hear the message of Jesus. What keeps us from hearing the voice and the call of Jesus? Are we obsessed with our work and our routines and our activities? Are we sucked into our social networking, compulsively immersed in our iPads and cell phones? Have we become tone deaf to Jesus speaking through our spouses and our families and children and our coworkers and friends and neighbors? or through people outside our familiar circles, those in need of our compassion and care. Just as the disciples of old, we are invited to reorder our lives and to come and follow him. And the emphasis is not so much on leaving things behind as it is on listening for his voice and heeding his call. Pope Emeritus Benedict explains in his book about Jesus that his invitation, come and follow me, has a technical and a very specific meaning. It describes the intimate relationship and bond between teacher and disciple. So this was the fundamental message to those first disciples, come and learn from me. Put down your nets and I will teach you how to be fishers of men. We might see the nets of these fishermen as symbols of the worldly entanglements that prevent us from hearing the voice of Jesus when he calls us. Our Lord invites each one of us to share in his life. But how can we come to know him and allow the fire of the Holy Spirit to flow within us and through us if we are filled up with our own busyness and preoccupations? It takes patience and it takes humility, dear friends in Christ to hear the voice of Jesus and to learn from him and to learn to follow him. How do we do that in the noisy and busy world that we live in? I don't know why it is, but there, there seems to be something in the human condition that wants to wait for some great divine encounter like Moses in the burning bush or the one that St. Paul had on the Damascus Road. But for most of us, it's simply a matter of silencing our own voice and growing in awareness of his divine presence. In other words, shutting up long enough to listen for his voice and his call in every moment of our lives. So maybe that is why he gave us two ears and only one mouth, so that we might listen for his voice within our own hearts, 
within the beauty of his wondrous creation, in moments of quiet prayer and contemplation, in every human person made in his holy and sacred image, and in service to our brothers and sisters in need. As mentioned earlier, this third Sunday of Ordinary Time has been designated by the church as the Sunday of the Word of God. It's been established by Pope Francis to emphasize the central importance of sacred scripture in listening to Jesus, the Father's eternal word. It's a good reminder, I think, for us Catholics to dust off our Bibles if we want to hear and follow Jesus. Jesus asked those two sets of brothers in the gospel to, to step outside of their daily routines, their comfort zones, to leave their nets so that they could hear his voice and learn from him. And Jesus calls each one of us just as surely as he did Peter and Andrew and James and John. He calls us to learn from him in unexpected and surprising ways. And so we might pray, help us to listen for your voice, Lord, that we may walk with you in newness of life. Give each one of us eyes to see you and ears to hear you. Give us the grace to respond with faith and trust and love to your life-giving invitation. Come and walk with me. Come and learn from me. Come and follow me. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, <clears throat> maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father. For us and for our salvation, he came out of heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he came in. For our sake, he was crucified and was crucified. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess to the baptism of the Church of the Saints. I look forward to the resurrection of the Lord. Let us now turn to our Heavenly Father and ask him to hear our prayers as we bring to him our petitions. For the church in the world today that her leaders will preach the good news of Jesus Christ with wisdom and zeal, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our nation and all nations of the world, that those who live in darkness may be granted eyes of faith to see the light of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For unity among Christians, that man-made divisions may be healed through truth and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each one of us, that we might strive to hear the voice of Jesus in our lives and to respond with faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of faith, that the one Eucharist will strengthen our unity and solidarity with one another and with those in need of our compassion and care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those suffering in body, mind, or spirit, 
especially Vicki Barton, Hazel Risch, Lisa Walker, Diane Swayze, Dick Bowling, and infant James Meyer, that Christ's light will bring them consolation and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, that eternal light will shine upon them. And for Vince Baker, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Bob Cross, for whom this Mass is intended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these, our prayers, and to grant them in your mercy and in your compassion for us, and to also grant them through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, in sanctifying them. Grant that they may profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your, di with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise. have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mark the Evangelist, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassionate and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Brothers and sisters, let us offer one another Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
At this time of Holy Communion, we welcome family and friends from other religious traditions to come forward to receive a blessing. For those who are not receiving communion, but would like to receive the blessing, we invite you to join the communion procession. And when you stand in front of the communion minister, simply cross your arms across your chest and the blessing will be imparted. Our communion hymn is number 781, Lord, When You Came. Number 781.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glorify in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dinner dance tickets are still on sale today in the narthex. And just as a reminder, the dinner dance is Friday, February 21st at Bala Vista Golf Club. The Girl Scouts are selling cookies in the narthex today, so please support the St. Mark Troop of Girl Scouts if you see them out there and you would like some Girl Scout cookies. The Men's Club is hosting the Men's Night Out on February 7th. All men 21 and over are invited. Please see the bulletin for more details on that. And for our parishioners ages 35 to 55 years old, there is an email survey that will be going out tomorrow morning. It'll also be on our website. To begin a conversation about ministry events similar to those for the young adults and the maturing adults. Please take time to complete this and contact Ann Ruth, the chairperson of this new committee, if you have any questions. Hopefully this will fill the gap that we have young adults that go up to about 33 and the MMA starting at 55, which leaves quite a wide gap there in the middle. And so we're thinking of a new name for this group, young middle-aged Catholics, whatever it might be. I know that middle age is not the word that people, <laughs> that people want to hear, but we'll find a name that's snappy and easy to remember for this new group so we can begin offering events and things for that age range specific as well. And of course, it is all schools week, or it is Catholic schools week this coming week, and tonight after our 5.30 mass, you're all invited to please join us for the spaghetti dinner hosted by our school ministry in, in Schaefer Hall. So we hope to see all of you in there just after mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. As we are sent forth, we will sing together number 790, the summons, number 790.